Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I will be talking about in-gel digestion protocol for proteomic analysis. You can start with any sample that has proteins inside. My sample today is a beer. I chose gel method over others as I don't know the concentration of my sample and in beer it is hard to measure. So I know a lot of people just hate gels, but let me tell you what is cool about this method. It is efficient as other sample prep approaches, but it is super useful when A, we cannot measure sample concentration for some reason before we start, B, when doing IPs or co-IPs, because guess what? We can see from our gel after we stain it if our experiment is likely to work or fail. So let's start. Okay, say hi to my beer sample here, and I will be mixing it with the sample buffer just like as you are doing Western blot. I'm using XT system from BioReady in my lab, so for a sample buffer, I'm using XT sample buffer and mixing it with the XT reducing agent. When I mix my sample, I will be boiling it for 10 minutes in order to break those disulfide bonds. So I'm going to start opening my gel and I'm using BioRed Criterion XT gel. When doing anything mass spec, we want to have conditions as clean as possible and stay away from keratin contamination. That is why we prefer pre-made gels over lab-made ones. Now I'm going to put my gel in the chamber and take off the comb. In order for our proteins to travel down the gel, we need a buffer. So as I'm using everything XT, my running buffer will be XT mops. As you can see, I'm going to fill the chamber with XT mops buffer, and then I will start with loading my samples. If you can, make space between your samples. Otherwise, if you have to use every well on your gel, you're still good to go. Now, the samples are loaded, and I'm going to close the chamber and start the electrophoresis. I do use 200 volts and it works fine. Fortunately, it's not going to take me a lot of time until I'm done with this step, as I will be running my samples only until they reach for about here. I stop my electrophoresis and now I'm gonna use a dye to stain my gel. I'm using Instant Blue, as it only takes 15 minutes to stain my gel, and it doesn't need any de-staining. But you can use Kumasi Blue instead, just it is gonna take another day for the gels to be stained and to be de-stained. So for this experiment, I did run a very short gel. If you want super, and I mean super good resolution at the end, or you just wanna see a specific band, Run your sample until the very end, but you will need to cut it in around 10 pieces. Otherwise, you will not be able technically to do the sample prep step. To cut the bands out, you will need a HPLC gray water, methanol, and a scalpel. Between cutting each lane or band, you want to clean your scalpel with water, methanol, and then water again. When you cut your gel out and put it in the tube, make sure, and this is very important, to cut that gel piece into little cube pieces using your scalpel. So guys, everything in these preps is you add something in the tube and then you take it out. I use 100 microliters of whatever I'm adding from now on, as that should cover gel pieces. Your gel pieces should occupy a maximum of one third of the tube. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to add 100 microliter of HPLC water to cover my gel pieces, and then I'm gonna shake it for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes are over, I will simply remove water from each of my tubes. The next step is adding acetonitrile, also known as ACN, so I'm going to add acetonitrile to each of my tubes and then I'm going to wait for 10 minutes. Um, the reason why we add acetonitrile is because it's going to shrink our gels. 
Now, I'm going to remove acetonitrile from my tubes and something amazing is happening here. As you can see, my sample is blue. That means that acetonitrile will also destain my gels. Our next step is reduction and I'm going to be using 20 millimolar TCP in Ambic. Ambic is short for ammonium bicarbonate. The process takes 30 minutes on 56 degrees Celsius. After 30 minutes, I will open my tubes, still keeping them in my thermomixer and add 100 microliter of ACN. I will continue shaking for additional 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how stained my samples still look. You can see from my tube how my gels look like now. They definitely shrunk a little and look whitish. I will remove the liquid from my tubes. After I removed all of my liquid, I'm going to add actually more acetonitrile. So I'm going to add it and leave for additional five minutes. And after that, my jaws will look super shrunk and white. The next step is alkylation. As we want to lock the cysteine groups so the protein cannot form again disulfide bonds, as they do tend to rebound sometimes. This step takes 20 minutes in the dark, and I will be using either acetamide from Pierce, as you can see, it comes in these little vials. I will make 375 millimolar either acetamide in Ambic. I'm gonna close all of my tubes now, and then I'm gonna shake them in the dark for 20 minutes. I'm gonna cover my tubes with a foil. The shaking is at the room temperature. After the alkylation step is over, I'm gonna remove the liquid from the tubes. I'm gonna add ACN, wait for five to 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna remove it. We came now to the most important and the very last step of the day, protein digestion. For this step, I will use MS Grey Trypsin and I only need a very little of it. My solution is 15 nanograms per microliter. I will add the trypsin to my tubes just to cover the gel pieces and leave it on ice for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes is over, I will slowly remove uh, trypsin from all of my tubes. The last thing I want to do now is cover my gel pieces with 25 millimolar Ambic that I checked just the pH. It has to be around 8, so the trypsin likes that pH. Uh, I'm going to cover all of my gel pieces. I usually do between 100 and 200 uh, microliter of Ambic, and then I'm going to leave it overnight for the digestion at 37 Celsius. We made it to the day two of our protocol. So in our tubes from yesterday, we should expect to have peptides and not proteins, but be aware that digestion is never 100%. So what are we doing today? We are extracting peptides from our gel. So we're gonna take our tubes from yesterday, move it, take another set of tubes and label it, and then we're gonna have an extraction buffer and we're gonna clean the new tubes. And this is really important because usually at the bottom of the tubes, there are always some polymers, so we don't wanna contaminate our machine. So I'm just gonna add in and out the extraction buffer in each of my tubes. So what I'm gonna do now is take the liquid out from yesterday's tubes where we have our peptides and pipe them into a new label corresponding tubes. I will be doing this for each of my tubes. Now I'm going to add 100 microliter of the extraction buffer to my gels from yesterday and this buffer will extract out more of my peptides. I will be extracting for 15 minutes in the room temperature. 
After 15 minutes, when the extraction is over, I will add this new peptide extract to its corresponding tube, where I already have an extract from a previous step, basically combining it. So I will do this for each of my tube, and after I'm done, I'm going to repeat this step. So guys, uh, all our hard work is done now. My last step is um, to dry my samples down. So I'm gonna use a speed vac. Uh, I'm gonna dry my samples down until I see a nice white palette. And after that, I will clean the palette. The reason why we have to clean our peptide palette is because mass spectrometers don't like detergents and salts. Guys, do you know it takes more than two days to flush SDS out from a mass bag? There are so many products available for sample desalting. My favorite ones are C18 tips and spin columns. I will not cover today how we do this step as all these products come with straightforward instructions. At the end, we are gonna dissolve our peptides with a 0.1% formic acid. I like to inject one microgram of the peptide, so that is what I'm gonna do here. So yes, we made it through all of these steps together. Thank you for following these steps with me. It is a long protocol, but it works. Uh, I will be showing you in one of my future videos how good results look like versus the bad results and what is the probable cause. Uh, this is my first video made ever, so please be kind to me. If you ha have any comments or questions for me, um, please post it down. I will try to reply to every single one of you. Again, thank you for watching this video. This video is made to help students and guide students that we cannot provide the training right now because of the COVID-19. So I hope you find this video useful. And again, thank you for watching.